Well, hello, uh, Ohio State students and ag faculty. My name is Zach Spencer, and this is Caitlin Yonke, and we're from Northeast Community College in Norfolk, Nebraska, North, Northeast Nebraska. And uh, we're doing this video on uh, cover crops. And uh, first off, I would like to talk a little bit about myself. Uh, I come from Lincoln, Nebraska, UNL, home of UNL. And uh, I am a sophomore here at Northeast studying animal science um, with an emphasis of feedlot management and farm and ranch management. My name is Caitlin Yonke. I am originally from Wayne, Nebraska, and this is my second year also at Northeast Community College, but also my last semester, as I will then be transferring down to UNL to also major in animal science. And so uh, as we go on through this uh, conversation, we're going to talk about certain steps uh, that can succeed in a cover crop and different uh, successful measures that you could use uh, to better your uh, cover crop operation. And so, yes, with this field that we uh, are putting this plot in, uh, for our uh, school, it is called... R6, the field is called, um, and it's located east of our main camp, is about half a mile. Um, and it, uh, rotation wise, was corn to corn and forage sorghum. And the soil type is marginally sandy. And so, with that, uh, we have a no till dry land uh, operation going on. Um, and with that, we drilled. Uh, cereal rye, oats, winter peas, and forage collards, uh, and the field is probably um, 18 to 17 acres. Other improvements that can be made to the soil, just with overall soil structure and adding additional nutrients back into the soil, can be made by increasing the organic matter in your soil, and that can be done by just with crop residue and roots and the soil microbial world because micro the microbial world is made up of different fungi, protozoa, and other bacteria. And when you have a no-till field like we have here at, at our campus, um, that when you plant a cover crop, the mycorrhizae fungi just thrives with the other plants that are planted and they form a symbiotic relationship with each other whereas the mycorrhizae fungi that's hooked onto the plant allows the root system to grow immensely and then it allows the plant to absorb more water and nutrients that the soil can provide and in return the plant provides the mycorrhizae fungi with more sugar that the plant has produced from its photosynthesis processes. So could that be caused uh, due to more rain or precipitation through the years or just the uh, no-till part of it? The no-till part of it has a lot of help with it when you don't interrupt the soil um, and the root systems that have been placed. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so with that, um, I have also, uh, we had a guest speaker come in from the Nebraska Extension Office here in Norfolk. He's a local farmer uh, just south of uh, Norfolk. Uh, and uh, he's all continuous uh, no-till and all continuous cover crops. He has no livestock, um, but he uh, drills uh, after he harvests his beans for that following uh, corn crop that next year. And over those six or seven years that he's been continuous cover crop. He has seen a change in 10 to 15 uh, more bushels over the years. And uh, he is not, he is no irrigated, all dry land. And uh, this last summer here in Northeast Nebraska, we, we had a uh, five inch, six inch rain. And uh, that, uh, that rain kind of, you could see in different fields that were not used in cover crops, uh, they had very bad erosion and uh, the farmers there had lost a lot of yield from that. And this particular 
uh, farmer. Uh, he told us that he was uh, uh, very pleased with his crop of that this year. And so with that, I believe that is another ad of improvement uh, of cover crops. And so Another great benefit of adding cover crops to a field is just the added nutrients that it provides and puts back into the field. Um, as we all know, nitrogen is very important to plants as they all need it. And as legumes can fix their own nitrogen, it just increases the level in the soil as the plants grow. And when other plants are harvested or when they die, it just releases the nitrogen for other plants in the future to utilize as well as that information was provided by the University of the Minnesota Extension. So with that, we thank you for your time and uh, we also thank uh, Northeast for letting us do this video and uh, thank you again and have a wonderful, wonderful year.